Hey guys, this is a sewer adventure, and there's a there's a lot happening in this map. You don't see it all yet, but I'm going to, in this series, show you how I built this map from scratch. So we're going to start in Dungeon Draft. I'm going to show you a bunch of different tactics and some advanced techniques to building a map this dynamic. And then I'm going to show you how to get everything out of Dungeon Draft and into Foundry and all sorts of things in Foundry that we're doing here. Things like Token Attacher and Prefabs, there's some modularity to this map. There's some animated assets, how you can get those, many of them for free. We're going to talk about using the Roofs module and how I use that to make these pipes sort of appear and disappear. Uh, we're going to use multi-level token teleporting all over the place in here. Um, I'm even going to show you how to use Molinette to decorate these modular rooms and make some of this really advanced gameplay stuff work in your world. You don't have to use everything. These little glowing treasure chests and, and, and just the dynamic way of moving through this map and what's available to you from a gameplay perspective. I'm even going to go into some special macros, how to animate things like water, how to instantly unanimate things like that. You can use it to set places on fire, things like that. So this is actually a series. And the first part of the series is going to deal specifically with Dungeon Draft and how all of these assets came to be here. We're going to talk about layouts and shading and using the terrain tool to do some things that maybe you haven't used it for before. We're going to create multiple levels. We're going to slice and export things. And then the, the latter part of the series will deal with Foundry specifically. So you may be using both tools and you like to see the end-to-end -end process. You may only be using Dungeon Draft and you may just want to see what's available in Foundry. Here's the GM view in Foundry of some of the stuff that's going on. Um, and likewise, you may be in uh, Foundry and not really care about the Dungeon Draft stuff, but you know how I made these modular pieces and these wormholes that can make appear and disappear. All of this stuff, these tanks that your players can find their way into. There's just a, a lot of really fun things going on here. This map itself is one that's going to be available here next week. So if you're watching this and it's after May 15th, this map's probably already available. If you're just watching this now, um, it'll be available around the 15th of May in 2021. And your players can run this map. You can customize it in all kinds of different ways. But, uh, but that's what the series is going to be about. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, today, we're just going to work on Dungeon Draft. And we're going to block out the rooms that are going to make this, this map what it is. I'm working with a very large, this is going to be a large map. It's going to be almost 6,000 pixels if it's exported at 100 pixels per square. So this is about 59 by 59. The reason I chose that is because once you get over that limit, you have graphics processors that will have a hard time with it. So we're going to stay underneath that limit, make the biggest map that we can within, within that limit. And what I'm using right now is just the default Dungeon Draft Core, I think it's their carpet. I'm not going to keep this. Just using it to block out the, the rooms. It's a throwaway piece. Because what I'm going to do in this map is I'm not going to use floor patterns. I'm actually going to use the, the texture or the terrain brush to make much more interesting terrains in these rooms. And one of the strategies I used to use to do that is I just block out the rooms. I ultimately put the walls in and then I get rid of the floors entirely. And I use the train brush to, to brush in the floors. And then I can use wibbly wobbly line and path tools and other things to make it a lot more interesting and effective. Now, when you're, you're doing your rooms, I'm trying to line things up because I know at this point that I'm going to have pipes connecting things up. So I need to have them sort of intersect and line up in the right ways. But you can see I'm putting some, just some odd bits in here. And the reason you do that is it just changes up your rooms. It makes them more interesting if you can create different shapes. And so I'm, I'm just liberally kind of making shapes the way that I want to just to make these spaces more interesting. There's a 
something behind that corner. There's, there's a nook or an alcove. I don't know what's going to go into these, but just by making them more interesting, it's going to help me be more creative with my space. And it's going to help with the gameplay in general. So instead of just drawing squares everywhere, let's, let's be a little bit more creative and, you know, create some angles and some circles, and things like that. Now I'm going to have pipes going everywhere, but I feel like I'm going to want some nodes. That's what these smaller circles are. They're just going to be sort of connector points along the way. And just line everything up. And I'll be fixing these later. And just getting a feel for the space, how I want the whole map to lay out. And I generally, you know, I want that big boss fight in the room down in the bottom right. I feel like I'm going to make a big, you know, flooded pit there or something. And then all these other rooms. I think that middle room maybe is going to be like the main waterworks area. Otherwise, I really don't know what's going to go into these rooms. And I'm just laying things out to see what occurs to me. Now, I picked this solid wall from Forgotten Adventures, but I don't like the default color. It's a light gray. I know that my, my terrain that I'm going to pick is going to be darker and, and dingier. So I use a custom hex code on this wall. And that hex code is one that, because it's custom, I just picked a random color. I can come in and change these walls anytime later to any color that I want. So maybe I'm not happy ultimately with this gray and I want to change it. I can do that. Maybe I want it to be green or something like that. I can do that with one find and replace just using the, the JSON file for the map. You can also see that I'm not using the building tool. I never use that, as you guys know. And I am purposefully creating separations. These aren't big continuous or contiguous walls. These are walls with separations in them. And the reason I do that is because I don't, I don't have to redo a wall later. I want to keep it in sections in case I want to delete parts of it or, or blow up in a, a section of it. Here I'm using the spline tool. I'm holding down shift and I'm, I'm placing the, you know, the, the second point. And I'm going into the into the room, which you might find that odd, but if you guys have seen me do this before. If I try to end the spline at that corner there, it's not going to give me a true circle. So by creating this in segments and creating my, my circle, I can now delete points. It gives me that perfect circle, but you know, with a break through it. And this is the way that I get around using the building tool. Building tool is super convenient, but it doesn't give you a lot of control. And if you have to change something, you got to blow up the whole building to do it. I prefer to stay with wall segments like this and get the same output with a lot more control over over what I'm going to end up building. Turning on snap to grid, I'm just making these things connect up in the way that they look natural. And I'm pretty happy with that room and it's got a lot of flexibility. Now I'm going to play with the pipe systems. One of the reasons I wanted to do this map is because I was just really impressed with Forgotten Adventures pipe assets that they released recently got lots of pipes in here. You've got the rusty kind that I'm working with now, both interior and exterior of the pipe, which is going to be important for this particular map. You also have shiny brass pipes and metallic pipes of different types. And, and I just really, really like that. You can use these to kit bash things. The materials are unique. I haven't seen these types of metals in the Forgotten Adventures library before. So you can do all kinds of things that aren't even pipe related with these. But what I'm getting a feel for now is how all of these pipes will interact with the walls, how I'm, how I'm going to make this connecting system work. And so I'm just playing with the assets because this is the first time I have, I have played with them. And I'm looking at how they both go together, but what I'm really going to ultimately do is I'm only going to have the bottom, the interiors of the pipes on this level. And this is part of why I made those breaks in the walls and why I'll make some more. I'm going to delete these walls and make proper breaks in them is still judging whether these pipes are going to be under the wall level or over. Right now I've got them sort of under the wall. 
So I'm making some breaks in here to see how that, how that plays together. And I'm being intentional about keeping breaks in these, in these wall segments. But what I, as I was saying, what I'm ultimately going to do is I'm going to put the tops of the pipes on a whole, whole separate level in Dungeon Draft. I'm going to make a new level in Dungeon Draft to make it transparent so I can see the level below it. And I'm going to, I'm going to put all the twins of these pipes on the top, the outside versions of it. That way, when it ultimately goes into Foundry, I'll be able to have those pipes disappear. Still staying with my custom hex code. Segmenting these out a little bit. I'm leaving enough negative space in the margins where I can add some modular rooms later, which I'll show you. And here I'm using the same technique of deleting points on a perfect circle. And with these assets, I'm going to try to stay with a width of one. I'm going to try to go with how the artist originally scaled these pipes. There's large pipes, I found out, and there's medium pipes, and there's small pipes. And the large are just large enough to fit two tokens through it side by side, which I want some of that. And the smaller ones, I think those are the medium-sized pipes. They can fit just one token. I want it to feel really claustrophobic in some of these pipes. And these, these players, they won't be able to see beyond the, the pipe wall. So it's going to be a lot of disorientation, a lot of wondering where a particular pipe goes. And it will let me as the GM do things like, you know, closing off one pipe. Maybe they have to make a roll to, to open it. I can introduce things because of Molinet. I can introduce um, things inside the pipes to block them. You know, a closed door or a grate or a valve that's shut. I can use. I can do that in game. I can do that in Foundry very, very easily using these same assets that you're seeing me use here. So it all works really, really well together. Thanks to thanks to the Molinet system. You see those curves that I'm using to connect one right angle to another. There's there's longer curves, but I just don't see how those would work in terms of token movement. Moving a token diagonally through curves can get really problematic. In fact, I'm going to make some mistakes in here and have to go back and correct some of them. So I'm sticking with that curve that's just a one by one square because that's the easiest way for a token to move, you know, from one direction to the other when it ultimately gets into the Foundry system. I'm playing with these. Some of these pipes will be entered you know, sort of from the floor. They'll crawl up into the pipe. Some of them will just come straight out of the wall. Some of them, the player may go down into the pipe. It's going to be a little bit of uh, hearkening back to Super Mario Brothers here. And what I've landed on is these pipes really need to go above the walls. At the end of the day, I don't want the walls encroaching on the pipes themselves. Here I'm just making some corrections to alignment. This is why we lay things out ahead of time. You don't want to go into heavy visual detail until you've blocked everything out and you know you don't have to go and redo an entire creation just because you, you planned it wrong. So this phase is just really all about, you know, doing more of these pipes. Now, if, if this is getting tedious for you, I will have in this, or I have in this video timestamps to things that I think are important for you to know. This first installment's really just about blocking out the, the major elements of this, this map. So it's gonna be a lot of putting pipes down, a lot of trying different pipes to make the, the spaces fit. I'm gonna use the, uh, there's a there's a tool a path tools so all these pipes are available also as a path which lets you gives you a lot of control especially if you're in odd areas that you can just drag a path and make it make the pipe as long as you want it's even got some of those um, fitting elements sort of built into it 
But here I'm just trying to, as I'm laying this out, I'm, I'm literally playing the game in my head. I'm, I'm imagining how my players could move through this. What sorts of plot devices would I put in these different rooms? Why would they be in this room first? Um, what could they have to do in this particular room to get to the next room? I'm imagining how they move through the pipes as a sort of uh, way to bypass trouble or maybe as a way for me to introduce trouble along the way. Keeping everything at 700 above the, above the walls. And I'm bypassing a bunch of that stuff. It's just a lot of, of the same thing of just problem solving as you go, how these pipes are going to interact. I want to point out one of the problems that you're looking at right now that I'll discover later. That pipe uh, transects a square. So I wouldn't be able to have a token actually move down that pipe. I have to go fix that later. In this room, this is kind of the main waterworks room. I'm going to, I know I want to take advantage of multi-level token to make some of these pipes teleport around. I think the Super Mario Brothers type of effect. Those two pipes you see on the left, those will link to each other. So a player can come in from one pipe, uh, get close to the end, but they won't actually be able to enter this room. They'll just teleport to that next pipe and keep walking. They won't even know that they're in a room unless they approach that room from another direction. So multiple pass through this, through this maze of pipes. Really easy chance to split the party if they're not careful. Finding more opportunities to, to correct the alignment of these rooms. More of that kind of choose your own adventure. I want. I want to have intersections where they really have to make choices. In one of these intersections, they'll bypass a room entirely. It may be a good thing, but in this case, the way I've designed it, it's going to be a treasure room. This broken pipe here, you can see it from the outside that it's broken. If you were in that room, though, the pipe will look like it's whole. So the idea that you have to approach some of these and investigate these pipes to find out that maybe there's actually a way in or out. These are all game mechanics that I think can work for you as a GM. Those two pipes in the middle would teleport to each other. So essentially this room that I'm drawing here could be bypassed inadvertently. And at this point of the design, it's just become a, a process of, of connecting up any stray pipes and making sure that there's routes built that will, that will get the players around. And now I think I want these to be tanks. And so I'm going to play around with those. I looked at my tank cover options. This will be on their own level so that a player can be in a tank and potentially have that tank flooding. There will be multiple egress points, but they may not be able to open them. Again, I'm looking at the challenge of moving players through squares, so I'm, I'm trying to avoid awkward situations where it might be hard to just 
logistically move in a diagonal. Here I'm going to have another two pipes connecting to each other with teleports. These pipes would theoretically go over this room and bypass it entirely. Getting close to the end here, where we've got everything blocked out, the next part of the series will get into a lot more of the design work and some really creative uses of shadows and other things to make depth and you know, design these rooms in interesting ways. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Hope it didn't move too fast. We'll put some final embellishments in here. You know, we're adding some, some valves and things like that. We'll do some more of that later as well. But I just wanted you to see how you approach something like this. This was obviously time-lapsed. Some parts were faster than others. But there's a lot that goes into designing a map of this complexity. And that, that was over an hour of just what you saw kind of put all together. So uh, let me know in the comments if you had any questions on what I covered here. And looking forward to part two with you guys.